Welcome to Movie Recaps in 10 Minutes channel but isn't in 10 minutes. Your popcorn is ready. Let's start. The movie starts in Bangladesh with a harrowing gunfight involving Tyler Rake, a former special operations soldier who takes cover behind a vehicle. Because he is severely injured or guy's body has more holes in it than Swiss cheese. The scene then shifts back in time to a high school in India. We are introduced to our second protagonist, a young teen called Avi Mahaja. He travels in luxury car with the chauffeur and mates from school. They head over to a restaurant where his friends tease him about talking to a girl. When he returns home, we can clearly see that this kid's parents are loaded saw to the security chief Repram and Avi for not coming home straight after school. This kid lives in a massive empty mansion and always seems scared and anxious well because he's the kid of an Indian drug lord. He thinks that Daddy Dearest is a quote-unquote businessman OVI leaves the house unnoticed. That evening to have fun at a nightclub with his pals later Ovi and his friend smoke some pot in the garage. Suddenly a couple of shady police officers kidnap them and intimidate the kids in a sleazy way. They shoot his friend in the head and kidnap OVI. This just took a very grim turn. I guess the father should ask the security team for refund. Saju pays a visit to Obi's father. The next day, he is incarcerated in Mumbai. Obi's father, OVI Sr., is furious at his henchmen for failing to do his task. Ovi Sr. is unwilling to pay the ransom because it will damage his reputation so he commands Saju to find his son and threatens to attack Saju's own kid if he does not comply. Saju lacks the funds to pay the ransom or deploy a special forces team to free Ovi. Since Sr. is in prison and all his assets are blocked, he then talks about the situation with his wife telling her that despite the high cost, he has a plan to hire the best mercenaries and rescue Ovi. Tyler and his bud is having fun somewhere in Australia. Tyler wakes up drunk, then casually walks to the cliff's edge and leaps into the lake below nerves of steel on this one. Tyler seems to have drowned and doesn't surface right away. He decides to meditate at the bottom of the lake, holding his breath and thinking back on his life. We see flashes of a child on a beach before. Tyler struggles and has to resurface. This big, tough, wounded guide rope is always compelling. When Tyler arrives back at his house, he notices that a helicopter is landed in the yard and that Nick Can is there waiting for him. Nick is Tyler's black market mercenary employer and seems like the closest thing he has to a friend, according to Nick, there is a mission to free Ovi Mahajan, the abducted son of an Indian drug lord from his captor Amira Sif, a Bangladeshi criminal lord and competitor of Obi's father. This is some weird criminal warlord version of Inception. Novi is reportedly being detained in Dhaka, Bangladesh, where Tyler's co-worker Gasper also resides. Gasper, according to Nick, has retired and can't take this mission. Tyler immediately accepts the mission not out of urgency or out of caring for the boy. But out of boredom and misery, Tyler does nothing but pill pop and plow himself with alcohol all day. He is ready to carry out his assignment, but Nick gives him an ultimatum. He must meet her tomorrow, fully sober. She's not just a handler, she's a true friend, Saju. On the other hand, is getting ready to travel to Dhaka, Bangladesh after arriving at Dhaka. Tyler replaces the alcohol with some coffee, and Nick briefs the comrades considering every option to save OVI and forecasting the actions of Amir Aziz's soldiers. Tyler gets approached by Amir's goons while on task and is kidnapped. This is turning out to be some rescue. The captors take him to their lair, and trolling Tyler is in phase even. When they pull the trigger with an empty gun, he doesn't flinch or blink. I think this should have been a warning sign that this guy is gonna mess him up. They demand that he pays up, though Tyler wishes to confirm Ovi's survival first. They first convince Tyler that Obi is safe before asking him to get them to ransom, as he has escorted out one of Tyler's bodies. Snipes many kidnappers allowing Tyler to escape and annihilate the rest of them. In one hell of a fight scene, neck breakers, suplexes, face plants, and even arm drag take down. Tyler spares a kid who is trying to shoot him. Tyler then releases OVI and carries him away. I guess it's his lucky day. 
The gun jammed elsewhere a mirror thief is assembling several kids suspected of stealing from him. One of the kids is even thrown off the building's roof albeit. He has yet to be found guilty Amir then ordered for Hada teenager to amputate two of his fingers because he had been discovered stealing ouch at that exact moment the local police chief Colonel Rashid informs Amir that Ovius fled inadvertently saving the team. Amir instructs the colonel to shut down Dhaka city and secure all bridges and exit points. After learning about Obi's escape back to Tyler, he drives the kid to safety, then stops to put on his gear things are about to get serious. He gets dressed and has overworked Kevlar. He offers him chocolate and water with about the same objectivity as feeding a catnick and his colleagues are getting ready to pick them up. She calls Ovi Sr.'s beans and tells him to pay the amount immediately. Nick requests that the money be sent within the next seven minutes on their route to pick up Tyler and OVI. An assassin takes out team members. Several of Tyler's comrades, including the sniper, are killed. Nick and her colleagues finally understand that they have been duped and Sr.'s goons did not transfer the payment. The new assassins and the corrupt police are now hounding Tyler and the kid through the woods. Saju, it turns out, was the individual who attacked Tyler's teammates. He was obliged to do so since they lacked the finances to pay Tyler and his crew. Saju takes out Tyler's friends and opens fire, attempting to murder him to rescue OVI. Tyler escapes with OV using the same call. Colonel Rashid discovered Tyler and Obi's whereabouts out and instantly rallied his force to track them down. Tyler then attempts to dodge Saju's onslaught while defending himself and Ovi from police troops. Ovi says that Saju works for his dad, but Tyler replies that he also works for his father. Taju joins the cops and chases after them. Nick guides Tyler through the city and after some mad driving in a chase, Tyler is cornered. So he rams Saju's car and takes refuge in a building. Tyler takes out a cop stealthily at first, but then unleashes an onslaught that leaves OVI traumatized but impressed as they move through the building. Saju attacks, but Tyler impetuously throws them off of the balcony. They continue with the knife fight where Tyler gets the upper hand and is about to finish him, but a car rams our hero Taju reclaims OVI and eliminates police officers. Tyler then rams a truck into Saju and takes the boy away at this point. OVI has been passed around more than a joint in the frat house. When they arrive on a somewhat desolate road, Tyler throws Ovine himself out and destroys the truck. Tyler purposely did it to distract the police. Saju, on the other hand, is alive and limping through the city aware that Obi is yet to be located, and Mirur gives the colonel the order to round up all his troops to hunt them out. While hiding, OVI helps bandage some of Tyler's wounds before Nick phones him and informs him about. Saju also served in the special forces. Nick says there is a helicopter waiting to pick him up four kilometers from the city. She instructs him to leave Obi behind since no one is getting paid. Tyler tells OVI that he only does it for the money and hopes his dad will pay him. But Tyler won't let go of OVI because he can't bear to think of his own boy whom he abandoned. While Tyler's backstory is tragic, it also proves that he is human and not some Terminator from the future. Taju, who is critically hurt, calls his wife to beg her to take their son as far as they can. If he is unable to rescue Obi, Tyler and OVI are attacked by a group of kids led by Farhead. He is the teenager who is going to get his fingers cut. These kids are trying to win a mirror over. But Tyler tosses them around like rag dolls. Fortunately, he still feels sentimental after his one anon with OVI. So he just knocks them out instead of killing them. Tyler and Obi hide in the sewers. So he can phone his buddy Gasper, a retired squad member living in Doc. He on Dovi and the evening at Gasper's house because he owes him Tyler has a talk with OVI. In the evening when Gasper leaves OVI innocently asks about Tyler's family and discovers that he previously had a kid who died of cancer. Tyler voluntarily left for a third Afghanistan tour because he couldn't bear watching him suffer as a result his wife abandoned him and now he does not want to repeat history. Tyler sheds a few tears, proving once again that he is a burdened man and a human being.
When Obi hears the story, he says that people perish not because they fall into the river, but because they decide to remain underwater. He is not only intelligent, but also wise well beyond his ears. These words seem to revitalize Tyler as he retreats for the night. Tyler thinks something has arrived. Once Gasper returns, he discovers that Gasper cooperated with Amir. Gasper explains that Amir has set a $10 million bounty on OVI, which he wants to split in exchange for Tyler's permission to take out the kit. The two get into a vicious brawl. After an exchange of blows, Gasper has the upper hand and is ready to move to the bedroom. But OVI emerges and shoots him. OVI breaks down, hugs Tyler, and says he just wants to go home, left with no alternative. Tyler phones Saju and they both agree to work together to get OV safely out of dock. Tyler intends to divert attention away from the disguised Saju and OB as they pass through a bridge checkpoint and then pursue them to the cover of their escape. Tyler begins firing at Colonel Rashid's soldiers. The next day, to divert their attention away from Saju and Obi who are attempting to flee by car, the soldiers discover their identity on the bridge. Taju shields Obi from them during the shootout. Meanwhile, Amir the coward uses binoculars to watch the fierce battle on the bridge. He then instructs the colonel to send more troops to the bridge to obstruct Obi's rescue attempt. Tyler races through the streets and shoots countless soldiers until the military brings a bigger gun, forcing him to flee. Tyler attacks from behind and catches them off guard. Nick and her surviving mercenaries approach from the opposite side of the bridge and blast the chopper that's harassing OVI and Saj. The colonel quickly reacts by deploying snipers and shockingly eliminates Saj and the members of Nick's team. She hides thinking the sniper is stalking her. Unfortunately, he shoots Tyler in the arm, ending his rampage. Nick discovers the sniper's location and headshots him despite his injuries. Tyler fights to save OVI and orders him to sprint to the extraction team's landing chop as soon as possible. At the same time, he heroically eliminates soldiers on his own and covers. The boy Farhead shoots Tyler in the neck as he attempts to follow OVI to the helicopter after realizing OVI is safe. Tyler collapses into the river while remembering his son a heartbroken. OVI runs back for Tyler, but Nick and the extraction squad save him, and he makes it safely to Mumbai eight months later. OVI swims at the school pool he dives and practices holding his breath, replicating Tyler's first scene. On the other hand, Amir meets Nick in a toilet, who assassinates him in cold blood, and gets revenge. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.